Welcome to Chapter 2, The Managerial Functions. A major difficulty supervisors face is that they play more than one role at the same time. To employees, supervisors are management, but supervisors are subordinates to their own bosses and higher management. Supervisors are colleagues of the supervisors of other departments who must coordinate and cooperate with each other. Finally, supervisors must have good working knowledge of the jobs being performed in their departments, and of course, they must have the ability to manage. Because supervisors play more than one role in an organization, they must have the skills necessary to perform each of those roles successfully, skills that are important to all levels of management. The effective supervisor needs to possess technical, human relations, administrative, conceptual, and political skills. It's also critical that the supervisor be able to intelligently use their emotions and possess maturity. The human relations and emotional intelligence skills are used most often when supervising employees, and these people skills are usually refined and developed continually throughout a supervisor's career. Because a supervisor is only one level in an organizational hierarchy, an effective supervisor must also have the political skills to understand how his or her department fits into the organization's goals in order to best accomplish organizational objectives. Supervisors who effectively ap apply the skills will be able to contribute suggestions to higher management and will be able to work in harmony with their colleagues. Finally, supervisors must also thoroughly understand the technical aspects of the work being performed in their departments. Although there are numerous definitions of management, the authors of your textbook have defined management as the process of getting objectives accomplished with and through people. The five major managerial functions, planning, organizing, staffing, leading, and controlling, are common to all managerial positions, although the emphasis on each function may vary. These functions are described as a continuous flow, that is, the functions flow into each other, and each affects the performance of the others. Team leaders must possess the skills already described, but they must also want to be a part of change. Developing a work environment where team members have a shared purpose and common goals is essential. The evolution of management thought has gone through a number of changes. These changes have been primarily in the way various management techniques are accomplished. The manager still plans, organizes, staffs, leads, and controls. One underlying theme that does seem to prevail is that management is getting things done through people while leadership focuses on aligning people behind the vision and strategies and empowering people to make it happen. While the distinction may be blurred, it should be noted that leadership is more than wielding power and exercising authority. Authority is legitimate or rightful power to lead others and is delegated from top management through middle management to supervisors. Although most supervisors prefer to utilize approaches for enhancing employee performance other than just reliance on authority, all supervisors must be delegated appropriate authority to manage their departments. There are two ways that power is frequently characterized. In the first, there are two types of power, power derived from the formal rank one holds in a chain of command, and personal power. This is power derived from the person's skill, knowledge, or ability, and how others perceive them. The second way in which power is characterized was by researchers French and Raven, who believe that power arises from five sources. One is reward power, the ability to grant rewards. Two is coercive power, this means using threats and punishment and discipline. Three is legitimate power, this means relying on position or rank. Fourth is expert power, this means having knowledge or valuable information that other people need. And finally, five, referent or charismatic power. This means influencing others because of some tangible or intangible aspect of your personality. Coordination is the synchronization of employees' efforts and the organization's resources towards achieving goals. Coordination is not a separate managerial function, but an outcome that's generated when a manager properly performs his managerial functions. Cooperation is the willingness of people to work with and help one another. While helpful, cooperation by itself may not be sufficient to accomplish goals. Coordination is also required in order to successfully complete most projects.
As first level managers, supervisors are the principal link between higher management and entry level employees. Supervisors must also cooperate and coordinate with supervisors in other departments. In order to be a supervisor, he or she must have a good working knowledge of the jobs to be performed and have managerial competence. Effective supervisors manage so that they get the job done through their people rather than trying to do it all by themselves. Supervisors are frequently selected not for their managerial skills, but often for their seniority, past performance, willingness to work hard, or for past technical skills. This practice doesn't always lead to the best supervisors, however. Listed here are the managerial skills needed by supervisors. Technical skills include the ability to perform the actual jobs within the supervisor's area of responsibility. Human relations skills refers to the ability to work with and through people. Those with administrative skills have the ability to plan, organize, and coordinate activities. Conceptual skills refers to the ability to obtain, interpret, and apply information. Those with political skills are able to understand how things get done outside of formal channels. Finally, emotional intelligence refers to the ability to use emotions to guide behavior and thinking in ways to enhance results. The skills needed to be a good manager can be learned through online classes or traditional classroom studies, but also they must be learned through on-the-job experiences in trial and error situations. Management is simply getting objectives accomplished with and through people. Good managers are enablers. This is someone who does the things necessary to enable employees to get the job done. Managerial functions are the same in all managerial positions. Regardless of industry or level of an individual, people in all supervisory positions perform the same basic managerial functions, planning, organizing, staffing, leading, and controlling. Planning means that you should determine what should be done in the future. This is the first and most important function. Each supervisor must take the time to plan carefully or that supervisor will, will be confronted with one crisis after another. Each supervisor's planning cannot be delegated to anyone else. Organizing means arranging and distributing work among members of the work group to accomplish the company's goals. Staffing means the task of recruiting, selecting, orienting, training, appraising, and evaluating employees. In some firms, the Human Resources Department and or top management take on many of the responsibilities associated with staffing. Leading refers to guiding the employees' activities toward accomplishing organizational goals. Leading is the day-to-day -day process around which all supervisory performance revolves. Finally, controlling means ensuring that actual performance is in line with intended performance and taking correct, corrective action when things aren't happening the way, the way they're supposed to. There is a close and continuous relationship between the five management functions. More and more companies are relying on teams to get things accomplished. The terms leader or facilitator refer to the manager or supervisor of the team in many cases. A good manager is not necessarily a good leader and vice versa. According to John Cotter, a good manager keeps the current organization running by performing the functions of planning, budgeting, staffing, controlling, and problem solving. A good leader is a visionary who empowers her workers to achieve long-term goals and strategies. To achieve the most success, a good manager will also be a good leader. Authority is the legitimate right to lead others. It's granted to the position an individual holds rather than to one specific person who could take it to another position. Managerial authority is the power to order subordinates and to act. 
Managerial authority includes the right and power to reward subordinates with raises and punish men be able to punish them with disciplinary action, including discharging subordinates from the company. Acceptance theory of authority holds that the manager only possesses authority when employees accept it. Most successful supervisors avoid using their authority as a club, but rather they use it to motivate workers with other approaches that foster mutual trust and respect. Delegation of authority is the process of entrusting duties and related authority to subordinates. Power is the ability to influence others. Behavioral scientists believe that a manager's power comes from two sources. One is position power. This power is derived from the formal rank held in the chain of command. The other is personal power. This power is derived from the person's skills, knowledge, or ability and how others perceive them. French and Raven believe that power arises from five sources. There's reward power. This is when someone has the ability to grant rewards, like raises or bonuses. Coercive power is the ability to use threats of punishment and discipline to get employees to do what one wants. Legitimate power relies on position or rank. Expert power means someone has the knowledge or valuable information that others want. Reverent or charismatic power means that a person can influence others because of some tangible or intangible aspect of their personality. It seems that supervisors who use expert and referent power effectively have the greatest potential for achieving organizational goals. Coordination is the synchronization of employees' efforts and the organization's resources toward achieving goals. Coordination is not a separate managerial function, but it's fostered whenever a manager performs any of the five managerial functions. Coordination is a direct result of good management. It is typically more difficult to achieve at the executive level than at the supervisory level because executives have to coordinate not only the individuals in one department, but in several departments and levels. Proper attention to coordination within each of the five managerial functions contributes to overall coordination. By involving employees in departmental planning at initial stages, supervisors typically have a better chance for achieving coordination. Cooperation and coordination is easier said than done. Coordination depends on the supervisor's team building skills, which will be addressed in more detail in later chapters.